everyone. Welcome to Work Manager Beyond the Basics. My name is Samir Kataria. Hi, I'm Rahul Ravi Kumar. And we're going to be talking a little bit about Work Manager, which is Jetpack's deferrable constraint-based background processing library. And we'll, we'll be covering a lot of intermediate and advanced topics, so we're kind of counting on you to know a little bit about Work Manager. So let's talk a little bit about like, sort of the release highlights of Work Manager over the last year or so. So we released Work Manager last year, 1.0 and 2.0. So 1.0 is a support library version in the old world. 2.0, which is what we're currently developing, is the Android X version. 2.1 brought you on-demand initialization. We'll be talking a little bit about initialization later today, because that's an important topic. 2.2, which is our latest stable version, is introducing support for GCM Network Manager, and it's optional, API 22 and below. So that adds a lot of reliability to your uh, work manager. And then 2.3, which is what we're currently developing and we hope will be stable later in the year, brings you progress and set foreground API. So that should be very important. We won't really be talking about that today. So let's dive into some topics. And we're going to be covering a broad swath of things, but they'll all be sort of focusing on things that make you understand how Work Manager works under the hood. And this is the first topic, which is how does Work Manager interact with the OS? So you all probably have a simple worker like this. And this is very simplified. It just, it's a worker that uploads images. So this is the basic unit of work. And you'll probably create a work request using this. You might add some constraints. In this case, since it's uploading, it'll probably be network constraints of some sort. You'll build it. And you'll enqueue it. So this is the basic work manager workflow. And what happens at this point? This is very important to understand because it'll have repercussions throughout the rest of your code. So first is, how do we persist your request? And the first thing we do is we store it in the Work Manager database. This is our source of truth for everything. Nothing else that we talk about is actually controlling the source of truth. So if we want to know if your work is running, has finished, has failed, has retried five times, whatever it is, all of this is stored here. After that, if you're on a newer API, API 23 and up, we'll store it in Job Scheduler. Sorry, we'll send this request to Job Scheduler. For API 22 and below, we'll check. If you have Google Play services on your device and you're using the work GCM dependency, we'll send it to GCM Network Manager. Otherwise, we have a custom alarm manager and broadcast receiver implementation. So after all of this is done, how does your uh, work request run? And we talked about Job Scheduler, GCM Network Manager, and Alarm Manager. So these are all things that are outside of your app. So the, it's either the OS or it's Play Services. Something else now knows about your work. And that thing can wake up your app, if needed, and ask Work Manager, manager to run your work. So for example, if you have a network uh, connectivity constraint on a newer device, Job Scheduler will wake up your, uh, your app and tell it, hey, you have a network. You can do this work. And then Work Manager will run it. We also have this thing called Greedy Scheduler. Greedy Scheduler only exists within your app process. And it does the same stuff. It'll keep track of some of the constraints, and it'll opportunistically ask Work Manager to run the work. But since it's in your process, it's not going to wake up your app. It's just an optimized way to eagerly run your work. And this is very useful because it doesn't depend on the rest of the OS. So it's just opportunistically and quickly running your work. So, Let's take a brief detour, and this will tie right back into this concept right here. So somebody came to me, uh, an internal team at Google, and came to me and asked, hey, we want to run Work Manager experimentally. We're introducing it in our app, and we'd like to make sure that we can experiment and do A-B experiments with it. So the first idea they came up with was, what if I stop calling Work Manager for an experimental population so I can do like this A-B test? What happens here? So let's go back to that first part of that flowchart. Your old work will actually still run, because you've enqueued this work in the past. Then you say, OK, I'm stop, stopping using Work Manager for this user. Well, all of this work is still remembered by the OS. And it'll start the app process, and it'll ask Work Manager to run the work. So that's not what they wanted. So the second idea was, what if I don't initialize Work Manager for that experimental population? OK. so. Your old work will still run if you use on-demand initialization, because that'll initialize Work Manager on demand. And we'll talk about initialization a little bit more, but that's one thing. And with auto-initialization, it'll just throw an exception, because it'll say, hey, wait, you wanted to run this work. 
I tried initializing work manager, but it's not initialized. Okay, well, that's an exception. So they came back with a third idea. What if I remove work manager for that experimental population? Well, now, now things are looking right. So your old work will get ignored because your components that are supposed to be uh, in, uh, in your app are no longer found by job scheduler, GCM network manager, and alarm manager. So they may print something out in logcat saying, oh yeah, I couldn't find this thing, and it'll ignore the work. But there's a problem here, and it's subtle. It'll still use system resources. So I said, for example, that there's a connectivity constraint. So job scheduler is still tracking when do I have network oh, I have network, I better go tell this app to run. And this app, in this case our app, doesn't have work manager anymore. So you've used a bunch of system resources to do nothing. And that's not good citizenship either. So the answer here is, you should cancel all your work requests to clean up after yourself. That's what I gave to that team. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because you should always realize that work manager is something that exists within your app, but there are repercussions outside your, your app. The rest of the OS also knows about it, and it's important to know that. So a common question people come to me and ask is, why is my work not running? And there's a wide variety of reasons for this, and I want to remind you about a few of them. One is unsatisfied constraints, and that's very simple, right? Like, that's the most obvious answer. If your constraints aren't met, your work won't run. If you're on a newer device, you can always dump this job scheduler, because we do store our jobs in job scheduler, and it'll tell you what the constraints are that aren't met. Um, another answer might be you're in DOS mode. Remember that work manager is for deferrable processing, so your jobs can be delayed in DOS mode to preserve battery. Similarly, battery saver mode, which is on like pixel devices when, by default when your battery gets below 15%, uh, background jobs don't run in this case. So same thing. Uh, it could be that your OS or your app is just doing too much work. So, Job scheduler only allows a certain number of active jobs at a time, so you might be exceeding that, and that's across all apps. Uh, work manager is also limited by the thread pool you give it at the beginning when you configure it. And by default, that's between two and four jobs. So if you're trying to do 10 things at once, you know, some of them will be in the queue for later. And you could also have failed or incomplete prerequisites. So you should always check, are your prerequisites finished? Have they all succeeded? If they haven't succeeded, a failed parent job will fail all its descendant jobs. So that's very important if you haven't realized that yet, if you haven't hit this yet, you should always make sure that happens. That's, that's the uh, expectation in Work Manager. And if you're using a unique work with the append policy, make sure that the parent job hasn't failed because uh, if it fails, everything you keep appending will keep failing. And we'll be giving APIs to address this soon because we know a lot of people sort of struggle with this one. And then the final reason is your app could be force stopped. And a force stop is something that you usually go from your settings and you say force stop this app. It wipes out all jobs and alarms. So Work Manager handles this fairly gracefully. The next time it's initialized, it'll just reschedule everything for you. But this, since this is considered a destructive action, we can't really like, control it when it's force stopped. We can't wake up your app for you at that point. That's the intent. And some devices we know force stop your app very aggressively. If you're running into this, come talk to us. We have some ideas. And the corollary to the, uh, to the last point is, why is my work running too often? This is one thing that also people ask me. Uh, let's take a look at an example. So here's an activity on create, and you're enqueuing a periodic work request. And this is, this is something we run into fairly often. This is wrong. The reason this is wrong is because every time you enqueue that work request, in the on create, it creates a new periodic work request and you just keep having more and more periodic work happening. This is the right way to do it. So you enqueue a unique periodic work request. And a unique periodic work request, you can specify what happens if that work request of that name already exists before. So we're saying keep the old work request in this case. So if we've enqueued this before, don't create it again. Just keep using the one we already have. And this is the right way to do it. And over to Rahul. Yes, thank you, Samir. So Sumir touched upon uh, how to experimentally use Work Manager, and he talked about initialization before. So let's look at initialization in more detail. There's two types of initialization, the first one being automatic initialization, and the second one is on demand. So let's look at automatic first. Automatic initialization is useful when you just want Work Manager to be initialized automatically with the default configuration. That is, you don't want to customize anything, you just want the defaults. The way this works is we have a 
a content provider called Work Manager Initializer, and that gets manifest merged into your app. And the way content providers work is content providers get initialized first and before application on create happens. So in Work Manager Initializer's on create method, we will call Work Manager .initialize and specify the default configuration. And so uh, when application on create happens, Work Manager is already initialized. And so when you call Work Manager .get instance. At this point, it'll always give you a non-null work manager instance. So that's good. However, if you notice this flowchart, we are actually gating your application on create. So we are adding the cost of initializing work manager to your application create, which is not great. So to fix that, we gave you on-demand initialization. On-demand initialization is useful when you want work manager to be initialized lazily. So you don't want it to be initialized the moment application on create happens. And you want to also possibly customize the default configuration. So let's look at that in more detail. So the first thing you need to do is you want to disable the default initializer. Because if you don't, then we'll still use the content provider to initialize work manager, and that's bad. So now when you call work manager.get instance and give it the context, we'll check if it's, if it's already been initialized. And if it has, then you give that, we'll give you back that instance. If it hasn't been already initialized, then we'll synchronously initialize work manager at that point in time and give you that instance, and going forward, that will be the instance that everybody gets. So that's how on-demand initialization works. So how do we discover the configuration, though? Because Work Manager needs the configuration. So the way this works is your application class, the subtype implements a configuration.provider, and that has a single method called get work manager configuration, and that gives, you, that gives us the configuration we need to use to initialize Work Manager. So first thing we, we do is get the configuration from the application, and then we use that to initialize Work Manager. If your application class does not actually implement that interface, then we'll just use the default configuration, but still initialize Work Manager. So let's talk about some pros and cons. So the pros are obvious for on-demand initialization. Uh, it can lead to a more performant app startup. That's because we don't actually block your application on create uh, for initializing Work Manager. We'll initialize it lazily. It can also work around a lot of device-specific problems. And so we have noticed that some OEMs play fast and loose with content provider initialization protocols. So sometimes you do encounter cases where work, man work manager has not been initialized correctly, or you have too many jobs. And this is normally because uh, the content provider does not, the initialization protocol is not correctly followed. So for that, you can use on-demand initialization. One of the cons is sometimes your application does get force stopped. And remember, uh, when, when a force stop event happens, all your jobs and alarms get wiped out. And so usually this is not a problem because you, remember, as Sumit said, Work Manager has its source of truth, which is the internal database. So we know what uh, workers exist and we know how they need to be scheduled. So we'll just reschedule everything. However, that rescheduling only happens when Work Manager is initialized. So if you're delaying Work Manager initialization, the rescheduling is also getting delayed. This is usually not a problem because you can just lazily call Work Manager.get instance after the application on create, and we have the and you have the APIs to do that. So. Switching gears, let's talk a little bit about testing, because unlike Geet's talk, we actually have time to talk about testing. <laughs> so uh, when Work Manager, when work manager uh, was a 1.0 stable and a 2.0 stable, it had very limited support for testing. And we know unit tests are very important. So in 2.1, we revamped our testing story a lot. So I want to talk about that. So let's take a, a worker, for example. So here I have a test worker, which extends the coroutine worker and has a suspending do work. Uh, all it does is delay for a second and return a result.success. Now, in an ideal world, if I was testing this worker, uh, forget the fact that this is a worker, uh, I would just create an instance of this class and I would just call do work and assert that it returned a result.success. It would be really that simple. However, you know that uh, you can't actually create instances of workers really easily because you have to use worker factory and you have to use, you know, you have to provide work manager the configuration and you have to go through the full worker initialization. So we made that easy by giving you a new class called test listenable worker builder. So in a test, if I want to test this, uh, the test worker that I defined, the first thing I do is use test listenable worker builder, give it the test worker and supply the context that I want. And then I set some input data, and I set some other additional arguments as needed. And when I call .build, it really gives you a real instance of listenable worker that you can use for testing. So at this point, I can just call start work, which is a method on listenable worker, and I call the suspending await. Await is suspending, it'll block, it'll, it'll suspend until uh, you get a result from listenable worker, and then once you get that, you can always assert on the result. Because await is suspending, I just wrapped my test in a run blocking block. So 
Now my test became so much simpler because I don't have to initialize work manager, I don't have to initialize all of the infra needed to initialize a worker. So let's look at what testing a synchronous worker looks like. So just like the previous example, unlike, um, you know, instead of extending a coroutine worker, I'm extending a worker, and I have the same do work which returns success. Now the key difference in coroutine worker and a test worker here that extends the synchronous worker is that this runs in a pre-configured executor because this is always executed on a background thread. And so for that, when I'm testing this test worker, the first thing I need to do is to define the executor that it needs to run in. So here I'm defining a single-threaded executor, and then instead of using test listenable worker builder, I'm using test worker builder, and I give it the executor. And the rest of the code remains the same. I set some input data, I set some additional arguments, and I, when I call dot build, I just get an instance of listenable worker like I did before, and I call start work and await, and the whole thing is surrounded in a run blocking block because await is suspending. So my tests became, again, very elegant and very easy to write. Sometimes, however, you want to test delays and constraints, and you want to test how your worker's reacting to changes in constraints. And in that case, you want to initialize work manager in test mode. So that is still the one use case where you want to initialize work manager for testing. So let's look at an example to do that. So in my test, in my test, uh, I have a setup. So I define the configuration that I want to initialize work manager in test mode with, and I call work manager test init helper, and I call initialize work manager, giving it the context and the configuration. At this point, work manager is initialized for testing. So I can now use work manager.get instance like I would in a, in, a, in, a, in a normal application. So this is what my test would look like. So I would first create the constraints that I want to test my worker with. Then I would create a real instance of one-time work request. So I, I would use the one-time work request builder, and then I supply the constraints, and I would call dot build. At this point, I have a real one-time work request, and I call work, work manager.nq. Uh, because this is, a work ma this is a special instance of work manager in test mode, this worker is actually not going to run until the constraints are met. And by default, the test work manager instance will treat all constraints as unmet. So we have to mark those constraints as, as met. And for that, you need an instance of test driver, which work manager test init helper will give you. At that point, you can use the test driver, and you can mark all constraints for the worker that you just defined as met. And now you can just use all the rest of the APIs like you would normally. So you can just call get work info by ID, give it the request.id, uh, and then you could get the work info and then assert that the state of the work request was success. And that's it. And yeah, just to finish up, there, these are some resources for you. So if you need to know any documentation, we have a lot of it at developer.android.com slash work manager. And these are your artifacts. Uh, so the work runtime, RxJava 2, testing, and GCM artifacts are all there. And thank you. Thank you. <laughs>